Um, and now the fun starts regarding this episode begins uh, interaction. I said, yeah, surface to surface, and as you can see, because it's a 2D simulation, we cannot use general contact, we have to use surface to surface contact. Um, and now uh, create the surface, the master surface, we check the rigid, pon uh, the rigid punch because it is rigid, and now it chooses a side for the edges. I find this a bit misleading, however, it means basically which side of um, this one-dimensional wire, so to say, uh, will be in contact for the contact that you just define. Uh, and it's basically just the yellow one. Uh, choose the slave type. Let's choose uh, surface here. Because this is basically just for the whether it's a node set or a true surface. I said at least one must be a surface, but both can be a surface. So that's the slave. Here you see some, here you see the discretization method, surface to surface, node to surface, uh, finite sliding, small sliding, uh, go for finite sliding. Let's start with surface to surface. Some other stuff you can define, which we didn't talk about, some interference fits. So if you have some initial penetration, how is this resolved before the actual simulation starts and stuff? However, you can now further define the contact interaction property. A new one is created by clicking on this icon. And here you have even more options than what we've already talked about. Uh, in metal forming, I would say the contact is what you are interested in most of the time. Uh, so now here, um, this is how it looks. I think you've seen this in the first tutorial. Most important, always define a normal behavior. Here you have the pressure overclosure formulations. You see that looks familiar. And you, here you have the uh, constraint enforcement method. By default, you give Abacus the option. Sometimes it can then automatically change or choose the best one that um, in terms of its opinion will work best in our case. So you can, in many, many cases, you can keep um, default, especially if you switch to a soft contact and then keep default, it will uh, automatically use direct because it's the only thing that will work. And quite interesting, ready button to check or uncheck, allow separation after contact. For some reason, it might be interested for you. I cannot really, I don't know, it's some weird way to model welding, for example. So when the nodes come into contact, that they are not allowed to separate after the contact. So of course, usually in reality, because things do not immediately weld together, they will be able to separate uh, from each other and so this is by default it's checked this option. The tangential behavior I said let's start with frictionless and later on we can switch to penalty which then gives us here the option for the Coulomb friction coefficient, shear stress limit and so on. You have some the static kinematic exponential decay we also we also talked about this one uh, rough is quite interesting. It's like unchecking the radio button uh, for a normal contact. Rough means that once they get into contact, no relative motion is allowed anymore. But you can also use some user-defined other stuff. So maybe we can already start with a penalty. Oh no, let's start with frictionless, as I said before. Okay, okay. So now you see here the contact is indicated and now I remember that I forgot to define a reference point, top left. This defines, if we now define the velocity boundary condition for, uh, where's the reference point? There it is. So now the entire thing will behave according to the boundary conditions at this point. I said minus 10 if I remember correctly and the remaining boundary condition is that we fix the bottom of the plate 
we could so we encaster it. We could also think about maybe restricting the uh, the sides of it, and then maybe you should do this on your own. Um, restrict the sides, and then additionally change from plane stress to plane strain and see what happens. That will be probably uh, interesting to see. So also encaster the left and right edge and um, additional to playing around with the interaction properties, switch the 2D continuum element formulation from plane stress to plane strain. Uh, so let's punch notation. What did we do? Um, we used a hard, a hard contact surface to surface, uh, no friction, and it was plain stress. I remember correctly. So we can submit the job, get it running. Get the PC doing its job and now I want to change the interaction and that I can do here uh, to sur no to surface and use that as a job for comparison. Our note to surface, no frick, plane stress. Get this running too. You see, even though it's a very simple simulation, it seems to take some time. And uh, that really tells you contact is quite a challenging thing to do, especially if you did not pre prepare the contact surfaces well for what you want to do. So that you have one very coarse mesh, one very fine mesh, maybe have not the best master to surface, de uh, master to surface definition and so on. So from a numerical point of view, contact is quite challenging because it put literally a lot of constraints uh, on the rest of the standard uh, FEM simulation, so to say, and it needs a lot of sub iterations to uh, do what you ask uh, the software to do, and so on and so on. Maybe we can now switch on under the interaction. We can switch to penalty and give it, let's say, 0.2. So we are now again at a node to surface, but with activated uh, friction, node to surface. Now we have friction of 0.2 and it's still plain stress. So now you could see it's interesting. They um, were almost done uh, simultaneously, indicating that the node to surface algorithm was uh, more efficient in terms of uh, computational time. However, we should start checking the results and also comparing the results. 